So welcome to our listeners. Um, I'm sitting here together with a beautiful man. <laughs> His name is uh, Stephen Sipes. He is the proprietor of the Summer Hill Pyramid Winery in beautiful Okanagan, Kelowna. Um, I just have the honor to be sitting here in the middle of the pyramid that he built so beautifully. <laughs> and Stephen, I first want to thank you for our friendship and for your availability to be here together with us to share information. Uh, the gratitude is on my side, Derek. Thank you so much for being with us in this, in this chamber together. And my puppy's here too. Fortuna, how did you get in? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down and be quiet. Yes, I know, I love you too. There is so much I would like to know because in your 70 plus years of incredible wisdom, um, we only have a limited amount of time, but I would like to ask you a lot of things. And I want to start because we sit here in this beautiful pyramid mm. and I, this, this incredible piece of um, uh, crystal is just uh, shining above our heads. How come the interest for pyramids in general? Mm. Where did it start? Can you give us a little bit of history sure. on that? Sure. Uh, I'm fascinated with sacred geometry. I'm fascinated with ancient civilizations. And I'm, of course, fascinated with life itself. What, what are we? Who are we? And, um, you know, where are we going and what are we doing? And golly, let's, let's, let's put it all together, you know. Um, my fascination with um, pyramids is, is, is something that has always drawn me. I, I just feel um, maybe I was part of the original pyramids, maybe I wasn't, but uh, we're all, you know, <laughs> in this together, so to speak. There are pyramids all over the world. Why is that? You know, there's ancient civilizations all over the world that have had these sacred geometry chambers. What, were, what was their purpose? What was their, you know, um, knowingness? I like to use that word with a capital K, knowingness, that, that, that had them creating these chambers. Um, and I think I'm, I've, I've come to some answers now that we've had almost 30 years of um, I would call it experiments with liquids in a sacred geometry chamber, we know for a fact that liquids are clarified. For instance, a, a wine or a juice that comes into the pyramid uh, that has flaws in it, the flaws will be accentuated. And those with good qualities, the qualities will be accentuated. Just as we humans are mostly liquid, uh, if a person walks into this chamber just having had a fight with their, with their child or something like that, uh, they will want to turn around and walk right back out because it's intensified. <laughs> Versus uh, most of the visitors to the Summerhill Pyramid are on a holiday and having a good old time and they come in here and they don't want to leave. So uh, it, that alone is a, is a beautiful uh, thing to understand. But uh, we've all learned so much from the pyramid. It's, uh, it, it is, as a clarifier, uh, a best place, I would say, to go within and to heal ourselves. We, we all know that we are our own best healers. Uh, no one can actually heal us, uh, but we can heal ourselves. And when we come into a sacred chamber like the pyramid, um, we can focus on ourselves, we can lose ourselves, so to speak, in a grander dimension, I would say. It opens up all the dimensions. Our, our, our right and left brain become one, like the dolphins and, and the whales, and maybe the elephants. And, and we uh, begin to uh, become attuned to our electrical in nature uh, bodies, which, by the way, according to Nassim Haramim, who is uh, a grand teacher, uh, is the way our bodies are structured. The, the actual cells are made of atoms, and the actual atoms are made of pyramidal uh, geometry. So, hello, we're coming home. And this is, this home, so to speak, uh, is a grand place to be. It's where all the entities want to be. Um, this may seem far-fetched, but I have come into the pyramid and been able to invite <laughs> and welcome uh, just about any entity uh, on, 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 in, in any dimension. Could you give an example of that? Oh my gosh, sure. I mean, uh, all of us have had loved ones that, uh, that we miss dearly. And I can sit here and, and bring my, my beloved mother and my father and my sister here. Wow. Uh, and, and my grandmother and my other grandmother and, and all my uncles and 
you know, all the people that have left, as you said before, I'm, I'm 72 now, so I know a lot of people who are no longer on this plane, a lot of people that I've been close to for a lot of years that are no longer here, and I can communicate with almost all of them. It's so beautiful. Uh, and of course, those, uh, I call them beyond the sun, um, the pyramid, the word pyramid is pyramid, fire in the middle, which is representative of our heart. You, you know, you do this wonderful work about hearts. The pyramid is all about coming into our hearts and being one with all there is, so to speak. And the, the heart-centeredness uh, allows us to, to uh, as I say, welcome all of the entities, uh, even those on, you know, beyond the sun. We can communicate with any entity in any time time in itself is, is, a, is an illusion um, and we've proven that as well with the pyramid uh, people come into the pyramid and don't really know if they've spent 10 minutes or one minute or one hour they lose a sense of time and that's an interesting thing uh, I could go into the, uh, the possibilities of why that is um, I, I, quickly uh, a pyramid uh, rather, the, the Earth is spinning around the Sun in an elliptical way, whereas if, uh, if you're in a pyramid uh, located to, or oriented rather to true north, and without any metal to bring it back into magnetic north, it's like a toy top spinning on its axis. And the apex of the pyramid is sort of like, a, like the toy top spinning around the Sun, and it may go in more of a circle than an elliptic fashion, and thereby uh, takes us out of the illusion of time as, as we all think we know it. Right? Between the elliptical and the night and day, we, we count our minutes by the second, which is uh, so limiting. <laughs> uh, you know, it's all good. I'm not saying it's limiting and nothing negative about it, but it's, uh, it is one way to lift the veil, it is, it is to realize that there is no time. Yes, and and well, that's so beautifully how how you explain that, and you've also mentioned um, the oneness before. Yes. How are we so deeply connected? How are what is the oneness that how you uh, see it and how you experience is, it? This is a great question. I have uh, written thirteen chapters in my book called all, the All One Era, and in each chapter I go into a whole separate way in which to answer that particular question because there are so many ways that we can come to the realization that we are all one uh, there isn't one example that will grab any and all of us let's put it that way uh, each different uh, experience um, may grab us or may not uh, so I tried to share them as a uh, as a regular guy you know I, I was orphaned uh, so to speak and, and I've been on my own since seventh grade I went out to work I used to work on a a paper route for a dollar five a week, you know, it was crazy, and yet I that's how I ate. <laughs> wow, you know, <laughs> you, know yeah. you, you get to be you get to know stuff when you're on your own, yes. right, for so long. And so I put my experiences down, uh, and each one is different. But to answer your question, every knee will bend, you know, when, when we realize how we are the, the one with the Creator. Uh, we are not the Creator. We, we, I don't want to say that, you know, we're not God per se. None of us are. But we are so much one with all there is that it is foolish for us to bow down to some entity that is not us. Yeah. We need to take back our power. We need to be who we really are. And we are grand beings in yeah. every way. There is no entity on this plane or any other plane in the whole universe that has more than we have. Yeah. If we attune our bodies with good food and good rest and good exercise and, and, and love all around us, we are capable of not only living a whole lot longer than we live in these beautiful bodies, but we are capable of, co of conversation and communication with the entire universe. It is magnificent who we are. Our biggest fear is our own grandness. Yeah, beautiful that you say that. I love that because that's how I so strongly feel it. When I feel and I allow myself, you know, the universe getting through me, then I'm almost scared of my own grandness. Yes. And that's also at the same time your limitation at that that's point. Right. That's right. Um, you mentioned that we might not be the creator. I have one of uh, my favorite um, sayings by Rumi is, you know, we are not uh, a drop in the ocean. 
We are the entire ocean yes. in a drop. Isn't that, if we see God as the, as the universe, isn't it that we are a piece of God, if we are the Creator? Indeed, indeed we are. Yes, and Rumi's, Rumi's work has helped me and countless others to be one with nature at all there is. Just hearing the sound of the waves on the shore and looking at the stars at night and focusing on our breath and our heartbeat. You know when you're having a new baby and you first hear the heartbeat in the mommy's stomach? Oh my God, what a thrill that is. You just have this overwhelming, you know, <laughs> magnificence of how beautiful yes. and, and sacred life is the first time that heart beats. And you know that the heartbeat is, is everything, you know? It's life itself. And the scientists still have a hard time and they cannot agree what causes the first heartbeat to start. Uh, yes. That's beautiful. Yes, it is. It's a mystery. Yes. Well, I have theories about that too, and of course we all do. But uh, electrum is a word. Uh, it is a mighty word. It, it's, it encompasses our electrical ability to communicate with each other and to and to uh, have all that we are uh, be one uh, and communicate. When one of us, just one of the eight billion of us that are in bodies, not to mention the billions and billions of, uh, of us that are in the ethereal plane, uh, has an epiphany. I call it a jolt. Uh, it reaches out to all of us. It touches all of us. Yeah. It's phenomenal, it's fantastic, it's magnificent. There are no words to describe it. So, yes, when we have, uh, I would say, our, our receiving abilities enhanced by opening our, our, our feminine energy, which is more difficult for us men, we're XY chromosomes, uh, and women are XX, and it's, it's easier for the, for, the, for the females to do it, but we men can do it too. How do we embrace our feminine energy? Well, it's a good question. I do it by focusing on the pituitary gland, uh, which is a, a purple um, glow in the middle of your forehead, and focusing on the breathing and letting go of my masculine um, ego self, uh, so to speak. And I come into a whole new era. It's like I get, I get, a, I get a, a sound of silence, a sound of the universe comes into my ears, <laughs> my body starts to vibrate, uh, I sit up straight with my back straight, sometimes I go into a, a trance state where I start to chant and, and, and even talk in, in, in tongues, I call it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's beautiful. And all we have to do really is um, proactively welcome the feminine energy. I, I also call it the loving universal consciousness. LUC, which, which surrounds us at all times and is us, yeah. uh, and, and is us from moment to moment. We create our, our, our ongoing uh, lives uh, and all life with each other from moment to moment. Uh, this is beautifully proven in so many ways and in, in so many experiments, and these are all, or not all, but uh, many of them are outlined in my 13 chapters. I hate to keep coming back to my book because it's not egotistical. Uh, my book is available for free on our website. Yeah, so you know what? I'm and not looking for any remuneration. I just want everyone to understand if they can, and we can, how magnificent we are. And at this time, how the prophecy of all prophecies, our oneness, is, 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 is a gift that we, we need to accept. And acceptance of gifts is something that was very difficult for me. My whole life I've, I've been giving and giving and I wouldn't take from anyone. And it, it came out in the form of some serious illnesses which I, knock on wood, have overcome. But it was a great lesson. Sometimes illnesses teach us the greatest lesson. And one of my greatest lessons was to receive and to be grateful and to accept gifts. And I'm now flourishing in that and receiving those beautiful gifts from almost all that surround me. We are all each other's teachers, and we're all so beautiful. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm, thank you for sharing that with me, because it's so beautiful, and I, I can tell, you know, I'm sitting here with uh, Stephen Sipes in the pyramid, and it touches Stephen, because, you know, he's living the life from such a large perspective, 
Stephen is not just a person, you know, and we are not just a person. We are part of a, a, a much grander uh, universe, a much grander God, a much grander love. And you uh, mentioned it already, the oneness, which makes us feel so connected. Earlier, before we started this conversation, you were talking about, and I love that, taking back our powers. What is it? What is the message that you want to bring across? The message is about manifesting. Um, it's this is our plane of demonstration. Um, this is why we created it. We now are in bodies, and we have a plane of demonstration where we can make our own music and art. My dad used to say, "Music and art are the highest aspirations of mankind," and I love him for that. Uh, but we can also our lives are a painting in themselves. Everything we do is a piece of art. In my career, I have focused on being an entrepreneur and having businesses. My earliest business was, was at 18 when I, I went around to the different banks uh, and, and sold them uh, ads in a magazine. Uh, and I thought it up myself kind of thing. And then I started to buy and sell real estate. And, and then I started to develop land. And then I brought in you know, people to help me make the land so that it wouldn't uh, interrupt nature because I was so concerned about nature. These were in the days in, in, the, in the early 60s before any, uh, one had anything to do with uh, ecological concerns. I said, no, I, I want to uh, not disturb the wetlands and, and not disturb the steep slopes and just cluster the units and keep nature you know, going and the food chain and all that. So I introduced all those things and you know, this is my painting. This, my life is my painting. And again, I go through this in every chapter, unfolding my latest drawing or my latest painting, my latest doodle. Today I love to doodle. <laughs> so whenever I'm you know, in a deep conversation, I'll sit and doodle all the time and I love that, you know, and then color them in later, which is so much fun. But anyway, <laughs> our lives are our paintings, are pieces of art. We are music, we are vibration, yeah. all of those things, you know. And just seeing that is not the same as, as appreciating it and doing it and being so grateful for every moment that we unfold. Uh, yeah, we, we need to let go and let God, so to speak. The wonderful uh, Elsa and Anna movie uh, it says it's so great. You know? yeah. She yeah. was my, my six-year-old daughter is just loving this so much and playing it all the time, and I and I cry when I hear it. You know, yes. uh, let it go, let it go, let it be, let it be. The Beatles said, "Let it be, yeah. let it go." It's all the same kind of beautiful thing because we want to be conduits now. That's the thing we need to embrace: is being in our hearts. Stop trying to run everything. We don't need to run everything. We don't need to be zealots and, and, and uh, religious zealots and, or, or mechanical zealots or any other kind of zealots. We, we, we're not that. Let that all go. We are creators. We are co-creators. We are magnificent in every way. Why do we have the, the <laughs> terrible things happening today that we have? Why do we have the, the people who want to kill us for the sake of Allah or God? Mm -hmm. Why do we have that? Because they think they are, you know, helping the world. And bless them all, they think that they are helping the world. They're coming from the place that is the deepest meaning for them. And we all have that. You know, we don't condemn them. They are one with us. We've all been there. And in fact, we've all been murderers. And we've all been rapists. We've all been abusers. We are that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So let's, let's say, you know, there's, there's two of the most beautiful things in the world is forgiveness and patience. Patience is one of the most beautiful words. Uh, I have two capital P words. One is patience and one is presence. Two very, very important words. I, I have a lot of words that I put into my manuscript. The A word, appreciation. Oh my God. Why, why does patience mean so much to you? Patience is one of the three most important, I would say, keys to understanding uh, and being one with the energy that is God. Patience is our blessing. A blessing that is beyond any blessing that could ever be. Patience with ourselves and patience with others. It allows us to see all of the wonderful uh, things that we are. We have patience with 
everything we have, nature, we have patience with nature, right? When are those flowers going to bloom? Oh, my guests are coming over tomorrow and they haven't bloomed yet. No, <laughs> that's a yeah. silly example. But yeah, stuff like that. Well, yeah, and, and you touch upon nature and you mentioned earlier, um, and you make me curious, of course, um, about the food that we consume. You yes. talk about nature, you talk about patience. Yes. Now, I know you, you do have a, a great passion because, and that's, we talk about the pesticides that we use to yes. help grow our foods in a, in a faster way or in a more, more beautiful way. We think that we are larger than the universe. Yeah. So what is your take on this and the, in the entire Okanagan mm -hmm. um, organic initiative? I'd yeah. like to know a little bit more yeah. about this. Well, thank you for asking that question. It's, it's another one of my artist, uh, artistry uh, in motion, so to speak, my entrepreneurial efforts to have um, this winery that is also the largest uh, certified organic winery, but also the largest organic restaurant. Um, all of the weddings here, we did 160 weddings last year, and all of the meals, we have a 200 seat restaurant, everything's organic. Uh, it is a place where one can come and be part of a uh, world show place, if you will, uh, of man and nature. Uh, wine is, is, a, is a beautiful way to uh, demonstrate man and nature. I always say a glass of milk is a glass of milk and a string bean is a string bean, but a glass of wine is like, uh, it's, you're capturing the essence of the, of the earth and the sun and, and, the, and the humidity and, and the rain and everything is in that glass. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a concert of man and nature. Um, and it's always different and, and you know always inviting and always challenging but anyway uh, not to get off on the tangent the the uh, Summerhill winery is my uh, place where I'm demonstrating um, you know harmony with nature oneness with nature uh, and I also know capital K no through my um, being a receiver of feminine energy which gives me uh, makes me a conduit so I speak as goddess, God, so to speak, um, that these chemicals are poisoning our earth, our water, our sky, our children, uh, our, our, our very existence. Uh, the, the, a brand new baby is born today with chemicals in their body before they even have the first mother's milk. And the mother's milk is also tainted. And this is everywhere in the whole planet. This has got to stop. We, this inhibit, uh, inhibits us from being all that we can be. Our bodies are finely tuned instruments, very beautiful instruments that are high vibration, and I call it the silver cord, where we are connected with that silver cord to spirit, to, to nature, to, to God, to whatever you want to call it, uh, to all there is. And when we inhibit our bodies with all these chemicals, uh, cell phones are, to me, the biggest pollution, the invisible pollution, but they inhibit us from being one with, with the energy of, uh, and, and one with the silver cord. Uh, all of these things add up to uh, an unfortunate situation where there are few of us who are able to now be in this, let's call it, for lack of a better word, galactic um, vibration of oneness. Um, and that doesn't mean that all of us can't be there, but it does mean that we need to do a little homework. Uh, we want to grow our own gardens, we want to be more self-sufficient, we want to get away from dependence and giving away our power, we want to drink lots and lots and lots of really fresh, clean water. We just discovered seven springs coming up from the, from the earth here at Summerhill, and we're hoping to get approval to, to bottle it soon and put it through the pyramid for clarification. It's things like this uh, and growing your own food um, is very, very important. Also, uh, to eliminate as much as possible animal proteins. Um, they're wonderful, they taste good, and of course, uh, we all love them. I mean, I could eat a steak today, but golly, I don't do it because I know how terrible our animals are treated. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you the, the agony an animal goes through when they're slaughtered in front of their, their kindred children and, 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 and how the, the adrenaline that, that they suffer goes through us uh, and, and, and makes us uptight. 
I mean, why would we do such a thing? And the poor chickens, the way that they're grown, and everybody eats chicken, it's like nothing. And the fish that are grown in, in, in conditions from farms, I, I could go on and on. If we take out the animal protein as much as possible, even eggs and, and, um, and butter and, and, and cheese, and I know we all love those so much, but I can tell you that with a good recipe, you wouldn't believe how vegan food can taste so fantastic. I could make a banquet and people would roll their eyes at how good it tastes yeah. without a single ounce of animal protein. We don't need it. Yeah. Our teeth are designed to eat uh, plant food. Yes. We are not carnivorous. Yeah. We are not carnivorous. We are grand beings. Yeah. We are not carnivorous beings. Yeah. I say no more. Beautiful, and well, you are the living example. When I look in your eyes, when I see your face, um, <laughs> you are just a living example of, of how you manifest this. So now you have this beautiful winery, you have this beautiful place with the, with the, the pyramid. What are your aspirations? You know, do you have larger dreams than what you have right mm. now? What is it? Oh, thank you for asking. Um, my aspirations are simple. Uh, I had the beautiful experience of having a six-year-old uh, daughter and uh, being in my little boy self and appreciating her little girl self and being like children again, you know, the, uh, the beautiful message of uh, a little child shall lead us and all of that. Uh, we have amongst us now uh, the new children or the indigo children or how could you say, I don't know, to me I, I've I've almost, as many accomplishments as I've achieved in this lifetime, I feel like I've left out the most important one, which is to be, a, to be with children and to be a teacher of some sort with children. And to me, my next echelon would be to be a teacher of some kind, even if I just teach them, I don't know, singing or drawing or doodling or mm. uh, the alphabet or, I don't know, skipping rope. I don't know. I don't care what the subject is. Just to be with children more would be something I'd like to do in my life right now. Wow. wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you, you have used the word love several times. What does love mean to you, Stephen? Oh, love means so much to me, dear. Love is so beautiful a word. To me, it's synonymous with God and with all there is. It is the essence of who we are. It is the vibration of it. It is when we shed a tear, you feel the love. Emotion brings us love. Emotion ties us into our souls, and our souls are forever. And it is love that brings the emotion. It is love that, that, uh, hmm, that we can take with us. That's how we are forever beings. And we never die. Our souls don't die. Our bodies come and go. Yes, they do. But we are alive through love and through our forever souls. It's such a beautiful thing to be alive in a body. We cherish every day in a body because it's the greatest privilege to have a body. Oh, boy. What a beautiful explanation of what, <laughs> what love is. And, and um, well, you know, what I said, we could go on and on because there's so much I, you know, you inspire me about. And um, we both live our lives to, to inspire other people and live it from a deep down place of love and, and deep connectedness with one and another. Is there anything we didn't touch on that you would like to share before we close this conversation? Sure. Um, I would like to appreciate mothers very deeply and fathers very deeply. At the end of the, of the Old Testament, the last paragraph of the Old Testament is Malachi. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with utter destruction. I've pondered this last saying from Malachi so many times, and I can only say that it is the time when we, the children, must honor our fathers, and we, the fathers, must honor our children. We are both. It is not a separation. There is no separation. We're all one. 
We are all fathers, we are all mothers, and we are all children. Let us come together now. Let us be that beautiful love that surrounds us at all time. I call it the LUC, the luck, the luck of the Irish. <laughs> love and universal consciousness. Indeed, so be it. I love you, brother. Love you, it brother. It is a beautiful conversation. Thank you for your time. Thank I you really, so really much. appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, find the links in uh, in this article to Stephen's book, All One Era. That's available for free, right? Yeah, alloneera.com. And um, also see the link to the Summerhill Winery and look at this beautiful, beautiful <laughs> manifestation. <laughs> thank um, you so much. Dirk. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs>